Let's go. <laughs> I had already heard. I can turn a shade tree into a money tree. <laughs> What's up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy, and I'm about to speak on it. Well, speak on it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so this has been a week. Do you hear me? It has been crazy ever since last Sunday, I tell you. And it's funny because, you know, you guys be like, oh, she want to do, she always trying to be. I'm not trying to be in the mess or in the blogs like that. Normally, you know, if I'm in the blogs, it's just about one thing. But I was in the blogs about uh, five different things. I had like five different situations going on that everybody was trying to go in on me about. So I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Well, actually, I do. Let me start with. Let me start with the Tamar situation. Now, at first, I was going to do like a host be going in to address it. All right. So <laughs> there's been so many things said. I'm like, where do I begin? You know what I'm saying? I think we just tell the story on what happened that day. Didn't make it long and all of that. But then I was like, you know what? That's giving it too much life. And it really is very, very extremely simple. Well, here was the thing about what everybody here. Okay. It ain't always the right thing. Basically, yes, I did hear her version of it. Um, Somebody sent me a couple of the clips. I was working this week, so that's why I wasn't as responsive, if you want to know. I was busy. I had to do a la carte season two. You can catch season one on all black channel. And I also was shooting a commercial with my son Ace. So sis was working, but um, yes, um, friends and different people would send me different clips. And of course I was pissed on what I saw, but let me just say this. If you didn't hear me say it before, I'm very clear. Tamar and I, yes, we had words. When I first saw her, no, I was not having any t intention on having beef with Tamar, okay? That was not my intent. My plan was to just say, hey, and keep it pushing. I, she, she, what she did not say to you guys was she had already uh, unfollowed me on social media. She did. I know she has you guys thinking that I was upset about the Dish Nation interview. That was not what my issue was. My issue was that after the Dish Nation interview, she actually went in her story and reposted the person that I was having a problem with or whatever or past problems with. She reposted them and put like, you ain't got to steal from nobody or some type of comment on her um, story as if what I was saying was a lie, which is what I had a problem with. It was like the person that I'm having an issue with, he's not even talking about this. So why are you involving yourself in our business? And why are you doubling down on it in your story if it's just about, you know, you being interviewed on Dish Nation? So to be clear, it had nothing to do with Dish Nation. I know all those blogs and I mean, all those interviewers gonna ask us uncomfortable questions. And I get it, you know what I mean? That was not my problem. When I saw her, I, my intent was just to say hello, keep it pushing. I said hello, she wanted to know why I didn't give her extra. And at that point, that's when the conversation happened. Y'all clearly see that I have no problem of saying my side to any story. So that's why she and I started having the conversation in a hallway with a whole bunch of people. It was clearly two women trying to talk out an issue that they were having. And nobody was interrupting. People were walking by. It was like 30 people that walked by during the course of this conversation. Some parts of the conversation was very aggressive as far as the way we were talking to each other. Some parts were, you know, calm because we were trying to really work out whatever the issue was. Anyway, so at some point in the conversation towards the end, um, you know, she kept trying to say about the Dish Nation interview and I was explaining to her that it wasn't about the Dish Nation interview. It was about the other things. And I don't know if it was because it was a lot of people in the, you know, it was an audience or whatever, you know, we both was, you know, going back and forth, but I basically was saying to her, it would have been no different of me 
speaking on her argument with we tv when she was having that big drama with we tv and if i would have reposted we tv and said that basically dissed what she was saying or made it seem like what she said was not important you know what i mean and i was that's that was what i was explaining to her and then all of a sudden she you know oh, I, I, ain't on the I can't be you know like all of a sudden now you want to talk about you know you don't do all this back and forth because i made a valid point right um and then yeah at that point when she started doing all that yeah i started flipping okay i just can't talk right now and my husband just as you've seen him do on many times on tv shows when i have arguments with people and start acting a little bit much okay take some time when i get like this i don't think rationally take some time take some time that's cool that's cool I mean, he was like, Candy, stop. You already know what it is. Like, stop. That's what he was saying to me. He was not saying it to her. But I will allow my husband, Todd, to come in, say his side of the story. Well, actually, he already said his side of the story. So check it out. So I'm walking towards the side of the stage. I see homie. But the crazy thing is I've seen this dude out in Atlanta. Like, I've seen him at... I go to this spot called Tribeca, Whiskey Mistress. So when I see him, I see him as a familiar face. I didn't know it was her dude. So I go dap him up. And then he's like, yo, I'm with Tamar now. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. He was like, yo, she told me that something happened. And I'm just trying to figure out what happened. So for me, his tone and his energy is mad, calm, and cool. It's on some grown up shit. We talking like two grown men. So I'm not thinking this is a big deal thing. So, cause after I see all of this stuff, I threatened her, I tried to fight her. Now, homie would have been coming a little differently. If you didn't say nothing, what are you talking about? You're I'm saying? just saying what we've seen that she's saying now. Oh, what is she saying? That, you know, that I tried to threaten her, I tried to fight her, homie's energy would have been much different. So homie wasn't coming with no type of negative energy. So we, we basically gave each other the same energy. He gave me calm and cool, I gave him calm and cool. So I explained to him what happened. You know, the same story you heard. I told my wife, yo, come on, man, let's go. You know what it is, da 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 Homie, I have no problem with it. And then I went on to say, yo, I've always been cool with Tamar. I've never had a problem with her. I explained to him what happened, da 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 Yo, you know, they were getting in this heated argument. It started escalating. I told my wife, yo, let's go. You know what it is, man, let's go. Leave this shit alone. Homie, he didn't have no problem with that. He, he, didn't, he didn't buck up like, yo, why you saying, you know, you know what it is. I never said that to her. I said that to my wife, and that was it. So then after that, I'm like, yo, I've never had a problem with Tamar. You know, we've always been cool. Even if my wife had a little tiff with her, I ain't had no problems with what they were dealing with. I see her out as love, hugs, whatever. So I'm like, yo, let's go talk to Tamar and just clear this shit up. Because my vibe is when the fellas are around, the energy is more calmer with the women. Like they, we can kind of help them talk on another level instead of arguing. So when we walk over towards her, I guess she see me and homie ain't arguing, we ain't fussing. We walking over there like grown men and we just had a discussion and everything is cool. She start flaring and cursing. And for me, I'm not dealing with that shit. So I told him, I was like, yo, bro, you got that. I'm out and I walk away. And that was it. You know, nobody checked me and you can see it in his statement. I looked embarrassed. I don't even know what embarrassed looks like but shit, I ain't have nothing to be embarrassed about because this was between them. So all I'm saying is me and, me and bro spoke man to man and it was cool. And I'm thinking it's done. You know what I mean? And I prefer that. I prefer we talk man to man. I, this, this right here is not necessary, but I do got to, you know, say my side. And that's, and that's what it is. To be clear, Don Juan was in the hallway. Uh, my big bodyguard was in the hallway, so I don't know why Todd would have to threaten anybody. The big bodyguard was there. Anyway, um, our promoter, he had came through the hallway. Everybody was kind of trying to get us, Tamar and I, to take the conversation into a private room so that everybody would not be, you know, able to hear what we were dis discussing. But, you know, we kept having a conversation. And it was cool for a minute until it wasn't. Simple as that. And I just want to say, 
y'all trying to make it, you know, y'all falling for that stuff, you know, saying, uh, you know, old Candy was being petty. But just to be clear, when she got fired from the reel, she had an issue with a few of the people in our circle for going on the reel just to be interviewed and stuff like that. Tamar was following Monica, and then Tamar unfollowed Monica. I unfollowed Monica, and then, I unfollowed and then, Tiny, I unfollowed Candy, and then, I unfollowed- And then Brandy uh, said something shady about I, Monica on social media. Cause I, I, thought I unfollowed at least 30 people that day. I unfollowed everybody that day that posted that show. So I don't understand how she don't understand, she didn't get how I felt when she was, you know, seemed as though she was taking part of going against me on something that was a business issue, right? It was a business issue for me. I felt like she didn't need to be involved in it. Simple as that. And besides, if she had unfollowed me and all this other kind of stuff, why wouldn't I think it's a problem? Why wouldn't I not have a lot of, hey, girl, when she saw me? Like, who would do Like, she unfollowed me. I didn't unfollow her. You know, she was saying like she ain't not seen me in a year and all that other kind of stuff. That wasn't true either. Right before, I guess I had a, before the whole Dish Nation thing happened, not long before, I had seen her out on a date at a restaurant here in Atlanta and I had came and spoke to her, said hey and all that stuff. So, miss me with the BS, okay? And then your contestant on your show, on your dating show, he wanna come on with his, his fake news, like fake news. Y'all, he ain't checking nobody. I don't know why y'all sitting up here believing that. But what I do feel is that some people who have a real don't like me or have an issue with me, I be feeling like sometimes y'all will side with the devil just so that you can say you going against me. Like, even when it don't make sense, y'all see me have arguments on TV a hundred times. And never once did my husband jump in and try to uh, threaten a woman or physically fight a woman. Even when he got pushed in the argument that happened at the, y'all remember the, uh, so I'm just like, man, y'all need to stop with that door. Y'all need to really stop. I do have an issue with every time people want to come at me, they want to attack my husband. That's not cool to me. Keep it to me. I can't help it. I do, I do spaz out when people say things about my family, my husband, my kids. I mean, who don't? I mean, you know, but that's like a trigger for me. I mean, honestly, I really could care less about the other things that people have to say. What you gonna say? <laughs> I, that's really where I am with it. It's like, what are you going to say? She was all online to this week calling me a billy goat saying I can't sing. But for me, I'm looking at it like, I mean, she's an amazing singer, but for you to sing so great and the only time people really want to talk about you is because of you beefing with me, then that's a problem. Sis, I think you need to be working on promoting your music, not promoting your drama with me. Wait a minute! She got a whole new single out. Y'all need to please talk about her for that. I'm like, Lord, I guess I'm the promotion team. <laughs> please talk about her for that and not talk about her because of she beefing with me. Oh, and this is another thing. Okay, back to the part about my husband. This is this is the part that really almost made me do a full speak on it where I was like, ah! Me and my nun singing ass gonna keep on saying, bitch. Ah. When she said the thing online about my husband must be abusing me and all of this stuff, trying to make him seem like he does uh, physical uh, abuse, like I've been, like as if I'm in an abusive relationship, I was like, first, what? That is not anything that you're supposed to play with. People, you should not play with abuse of women, you know what I mean? Physical abuse of women. I've never been in a physically abusive relationship. I've never been in that experience, you know what I mean? But I, my heart goes out to women who have had that experience. I know she has said that she has had that experience. So why would she try to make that as shade or read to me to make up, like I've been in an abusive relationship? Like, now nah, nah, that was low. That was deep and yeah, sis, like, that was too much. Like, you was, you was doing a lot right there. A person who's been through physical abuse should not be using that as, like, for something people could joke or laugh about. Okay, I'm done with that. Moving right along. So, apparently, some people thought that Speak On It was made to talk about the girls on the SWV Escape Show, and that's not true. We've been doing Speak On It for four and a half to five years. Um, I am an official YouTuber. I am deep in these YouTube streets. <laughs> Seriously.
seriously, like we've been doing speak on it for a long time. We do it, you know, we interview people on Housewives all the time. We've interviewed people who are on, you know, we have other platforms. We've had CeeLo, we've had Kiki Palmer on speak on it. We had so many people to come on speak on it. We even had like, I mean, well, we also have another show that we do that's on that note. If you saw, remember the, the clips that went viral of Nivea speaking on her life and the things that she had gone through? Um, that was from my YouTube page. So I don't think you guys understand, like, this is something that we just do. And it's really to keep it to the facts of what happens to most shows or to speak on whatever's public and that the people want to know. Speaking of, we got to speak on it coming soon with Nick Cannon. And I would love for you guys to be looking out for that. So if you do not normally follow my page, make sure you are subscribed. <laughs> Moving right along. At the end of this speak on it, we are definitely uh, going to address some of the other things that have been in the blogs that didn't have nothing to do with the episode, but it kind of do. This whole Tasha and Rocky thing, they little PSAs that they put out this week. We are definitely going to talk about that, but you need to wait to the end of the speak on it. I have to address everything that's in this episode. Escape can learn a lesson from In Vogue. With they seven million records. Who watched the episode? I know a lot of y'all did. And if you haven't watched it yet, spoiler alert. But let's get to it. Y'all were super hot. So how is this gonna go when it comes to billing? About last week's episode, when I talked on Speak On It, and I was saying my piece about the SWV escape situation and about who should go first or who should be headliners and all of this type of stuff. The whole world has been in an uproar all week long. And what I have to say to that is, first of all, I don't even understand why y'all said, like, I'm my ego getting out of, tro out of control or I'm being disrespectful. I, what I realize is people get mad when I say stuff. But when other people say stuff, y'all don't even think nothing about it. Now, SWV was clearly on the show. It's like, I saw 30 million records, bitch, blah, blah, blah. So y'all okay with them sunning us, basically. But you're not okay with me having a calm conversation, saying to them, we would like to be the headliners. This is why. You know, it's not like I don't have reasons for what I'm saying. And at the end of the day, if nothing else you guys can respect, you should just respect the fact that I am a businesswoman. And in business, you have to speak up for yourself. You have to speak up for yourself. Now, when my group members don't speak up, it's not that we ain't on the same page. They've already talked to me about their feelings and how they feel. It's the Vega has major hits, but do they have the fan base or the following that we have? No. A lot of times people don't like being the bad guy. I guess I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. Okay. But I don't mind speaking up for myself. And I that is my advice to anybody out there who has to do business for themselves or want to be their own business owner or whatever. You have to be okay with people not liking what you have to say. I don't, I, you know, I didn't have an a, a issue with SWV. I've always liked SWV. They, it's not like I don't like SWV. I you guys don't even understand like could you imagine let's just say at the height of swv in music or in in our in all of our music releasing time in the 90s if somebody went to swv at that time and said we want you guys to do a show with escape for television but we want you to guys to split your title your co-headliner and we want you to split the equal money with them and all this other kind of stuff swv at that time in their the height of what they were doing would have been like no we not they would probably been like we'll be on the same show with them we would do things with them but we ain't splitting no money equal in, in within their own group coco didn't even split equal with her own group members on the money so for me, that says that they understand that sometimes people are at a point where they can demand more. So I don't understand why people be like, oh, Candy, you should have been fighting for in within their own group. They've had an issue where one person was getting more than the rest. As a result, Coco was given a bigger slice of the group's royalty rate. And that ain't even got nothing to do with us. You know what I'm saying? So all I'm saying is, if you guys understand, when you speak up for yourself in business, you understand it then. 
But why do you not understand when I'm speaking up for my group when it comes to business? So can't really help you if you're not talking. I don't get it. It's no diss to them. I didn't say anything negative about them personally. I was just clearly stating that where we are now with the what we have to deal with with these promoters and stuff because promoters are always trying to they don't want to give you as much percentage on the back end they don't want to give you this they don't want to give you that so these are things that we've built up to and it took us to get to this point in our career where we could demand certain things i don't want them to be able to take this situation and be like well you took less feet in why you can't do it now because they do that guys they do that if we take less money for this situation, they gonna come back later and be like, "Well, you only got you only got. We know what you got paid on this because the promoters all talk, right?" So anyway, and I know y'all keep saying about this one show. For that one show, we all ended up not really getting no money for it. It was just that. But the whole conversation was being had outside of this about a full tour, a full tour. I don't even understand why y'all mad at me. I really don't. But whatever. Because when it comes to things in business, I do not mind being the bad guy to stand up for myself or my group in business. And it's always a conversation. I can say what I think, which is what I did, and they can always come back and say what they think. It didn't even have to be, oh, everybody getting in. <laughs> okay, well, you could easily say, well, I don't agree with that. This is how why I feel that we should get this, this, and that. And then you, that's how you negotiate and come to some type of terms or agreement. But everybody got so upset, but okay. So anyway, I'll leave that on that. This week's episode, you see that we've all agreed to go ahead and co-headline. The part that I thought was weird, Tasha hadn't even spoke to us. She hadn't even talked to us. And then she up here like speaking for the group, like, yeah, well, yeah, we are, we're gonna do co-headline. And it's like, yeah, okay, we cool with it because we don't want it to be an issue because we know we gotta do this performance for this um for this TV show. But girl, you ain't even talking to us and you up here acting like you wanna make decisions. <laughs> no. This is the funny thing, and I think that this is a problem for us still to this day. Um, as you guys can see, when Tamika was sharing her ideas about the, the performance and the show. And she was excited about all these different ideas that she had came up with. Tasha had a problem with that because when we were teenagers, Tasha used to always pick the set list and all of those things. And we just kind of like went along with whatever she wanted to do. Now, as adults, when we came back together, I made it very clear, yeah, I want more involvement in how the show order and different things like that, because obviously since then I've, you know, I've had a lot more experience, you know, working in the industry and dealing with artists and all this other kind of stuff. So I'm more, way more opinionated than I was when I was a teenager. So yes, then it became Tasha and I both were having more input in song lists or whatever. This time around, Tamika Scott wants to be a part of the creative. I don't think that should be an issue because we are all part of the group. There should never be a time when somebody can't give their thoughts or feelings on how our show should be or, or what we're wearing or whatever, just because one person used to always do it. To give you a little background of how our group works, it's four of us, we kind of work on a vote system, right? So we do our votes. If three against one, then you have to kind of go with the majority or whatever. So, um, but that's how we worked in the past. And as far as creative roles, um, Tasha and I have more input in like song lists and how to show order and different things like that. Now that was something that Tasha used to always pretty much control when we were younger. Now, when I'm, when they are performing as Escape 3, Tasha pretty much totally takes over and I guess she's just doing it by herself and she pretty much just gets to do what she wants to do. All right, T Tamika, since we've become adults, Tamika has wanted to have more input in the finance. She wants to be the one that's dealing with who's ever our accountant at that time and, and knowing exactly how much people are getting paid and, and d diving into the negotiations. She wanna be a part of those conversations and seeing the contracts or whatever. Now, when we were young, did she do that? No. 
Tamika was very kind of like not as responsible and kind of went along with whatever her sister went. So when she was younger, she didn't really have much input in things. But now that we are adults, she wants to take more charge of her career, which is understandable. And we give her that because that's something that she wants to do. Now, obviously, y'all know that I'm very much good in business, too. But because Tamika wants to have that role and I love how she has really maintained herself and and been good with maintaining her money and how she lives in her lifestyle. I'm like, okay, well, sure, if that's something that you want to do until she does something that makes it seem like she shouldn't be doing it, then I'm cool with her being in that position. Tiny, you know, she loves to dress. She loves all things fly or whatever. So she likes to be more involved in the creative as far as how we dress and everything. So she deals with all the stylists and all that. Right. Okay. So to give you background information. Okay. So now that we're having all these issues with our group as a whole coming into this, I already told you, and they've already said Tamika and Tasha wasn't even really speaking coming into doing this show. So to be clear, we didn't know if Tasha was going to be a part of it or not. We were not getting real answers on how she felt. Every time we asked her, she's like, I don't know. I got to pray about it. I got this, I got that. And we knew that this performance was supposed to be happening. So we were just like, okay, like what is going on? Are we just going to do it without her? Like, what is the plan? These are our conversations off camera. So yeah, we like, okay, we got to take more uh, control of what's happening. Tamika went ahead and started planning what she thought would be an idea for the show because somebody had to start coming up with ideas, right? We had, at that time, we had not hired anybody to work on the show. No choreographer, no, nobody. SWV went mad about Taj having conversations with Tamika about, you know, creative or show or coming up with ideas. But Tasha all in her feelings over there about Tamika coming up with ideas because she feels like somebody stepping on her toes. Okay, girl, you ain't even let us know if you wanted to do or not, so let's move right along. Which is another funny thing. Steve, who they showed you guys, he was supposed to be coming in as like a creative director. He works all the Pro 2 stuff with our music for our shows, and he also comes up with all of our graphics. So like when you come to our shows and it's like all this dope stuff happening behind us on the screen, he makes all that stuff. He does all of that. So the funny thing is Tasha normally – talks to Steve and is always on the phone with Steve. But this time, Tamika had started talking to Steve and Tasha had an issue with that. So, uh, so silly. I mean, it's just the whole thing is if no one has talked to anybody and it's three weeks until the show, what was Tasha really thinking was supposed to happen? Like, we were just supposed to wait? I don't know. I Honestly, I felt like Tasha was just dragging us out so that she could put us in a position where everybody was, like, in a tight, and then she could come look like she was saving the day and be like, well, this is what I think we should do, and blah, 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 because it's happened before. You know what I mean? Where it's like, we always be in the last minute, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, well, I just took over and just did it because, you know, since nothing was happening. Well, no, we ain't communicating properly, and that's why things aren't moving. But we weren't going to let that happen this time, so that's why Tamika just went ahead and started making moves to figure some things out. Okay, Taj told y'all that Spice Girls was her favorite group, that she loved them and all that stuff. My favorite group back in the day, I had two. Well, my very first, first favorite group that I ever, I, they were the first tape I ever had, you know, back in the day when I was little, it was cassette tapes. With Salt and Pepper, okay? Salt and Pepper, I used to know all the lyrics down, okay? <laughs> and it was a blessing for us because Salt and Pepper was also the first tour that our group was able to be on. Love them. Salt and Pepper is still the best to me. Um, yes, they are a rap group, but they had hits on top of hits, which is funny because I heard that when SWV and Salt and Pepper did their show together, that they had this same debate about who should go last. And salt and pepper, y'all. That's so stupid records. Like, so what are we talking about? And they were the goats. They came in first. Uh, so it's like y'all, y'all want to say I'm like they had the same argument. Like, get out of here. I didn't mess with this. And and my second and and I don't want to say they're my second favorite. They're like equal favorite, but they do two different things. 
My favorite singing girl group of all time is in Vogue. Our group, we tried our best to capture the essence of in Vogue when we were doing our harmonies and they were the ones whose songs we learned when we were trying to get our deal and be singing to people. Kudos to both of those groups, loved it. This is called The Many Faces of Sister Hot Pussy. Oh. I love Lily. she's funny and the simple fact is she loves to talk about sex just like I love to talk about sex. So I cannot wait to read her book, Lily. I think you're hilarious. And, and the, you know, that's what really also bothered me, how Lily was so upset this week. And and, and then my cousin Akbar was going back and forth online. And I'm like, for what, Akbar? Like, let that go. <laughs> like, they was mad at me, but I really wasn't mad at SWV. So I didn't understand. Like, I wasn't even going to address any of the stuff that Lily and Coco was doing online because I'm like, y'all mad for what? Like, this is a business, y'all. I'm going to speak on my on my people no matter what. I'm going to speak. I'm going to lift us up. So you can be mad if you want to, but I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at them for saying whatever they had to say. Like, I don't, I, I wasn't beefing with you, Lily. I actually invited uh, Lily to be on Speak On It, but I don't know. I doubt she come just because you so mad <laughs> on social media. Um, yeah, but I told Akbar, girl, like, you don't. I didn't be worried about this mess. Akbar was shooting a movie this week, so child, like, get out of this. Get out of this. They touched on Jalen's career again in music, and Coco had um, Taj to speak with Jalen about the situation. You know, one thing about Taj, I always can relate to her. I mean, she a tourist like myself. And what she said, and I love how open she is about the things that they went through um, where their group had their issues or whatever. And basically, she was saying, like, she went through some times where she ain't have nothing. You know, how this music thing could be so fickle, basically. Like, you could be up one minute, and then as soon as it's snatched up from under you, like, you'd be back at your mama's house. And she was just very clear with him, not telling him not to chase his dream, but just, just basically to keep that, that other thing in his back pocket, you know, so he can do both so i hope jalen has success in his music but i still think jalen got a beautiful smile honey he might need to go on and, and figure that uh dentistry thing out too because he probably could really kill and make some serious money now let's go to this clip of <laughs> tasha me and coco now, let me just say, and I'm going to get to, I'm going to respond to some of the things that uh, Tasha said in her video later, but I have to say this now because it kind of refers to some of the things that she said. She swears that these people be cutting out stuff like I'm telling them to do it or for the sake of me. But I wanted to make it clear that, okay, so in this particular scene with, me, Coco, and Tasha. After Coco left, Tasha and I had like a whole back and forth, right? And I was crying and she was looking at me like a cold-hearted bitch child. <laughs> when they did not show any of it. So I know you guys, I know she gonna come back and be like, Candy had them to take that out. And you know, they always take out stuff because she crying. That is not true. I want y'all to understand. I've been crying, oh, bravo, for 15 years, child. Like, I do not care if people show me crying on TV, if I'm crying. Now, that scene that she was talking about, she was the one that actually cried. But we gonna get to that. But in this particular scene, okay, so... Coco came over with Jalen, and Coco had good energy this day. Tasha came over, and we were supposed to be coming up with a set list for the show. That was our job. That's what we walked away with um, from the meeting. My thoughts on how to do that was to list out all of SWV's favorite songs to perform and list out our favorite songs to perform. Because I think the show, we was trying to figure out if the show was gonna be like an hour, 30 minutes, or was it gonna be like an hour, 15 minutes, you know. So that we could figure out what's gonna be the lineup of songs and whatever. So you have to start first with figuring out even what songs you even wanna do. 
So that was what my point of pulling up the list of SWV songs and pull up the list of Escape songs. Tasha, when she came in, she just was like not giving any input, wasn't really seeming like she cared. Every time we asked something, she was just like, mm, I don't know, I gotta think about it. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm not really sure. Has she done um, that in the past with you when you guys, cause you said that you two usually collaborate on the song list. No, um, basically in the past, she and I don't really, I mean, a lot of times we already kind of know what songs we do and we'll kind of like just, she says what she thinks, and then I'll go back and forth about the ones that I feel like has changed around. Basically, she changed. Um, I think they showed us going back and forth about a song list on our first Escape reality show. But in this situation, <laughs> Tasha just was not, not giving us anything. She was not connected at all. It's not like she didn't have a care in the world. Like this was the last thing she was interested in being a part of. I was getting kind of like annoyed because I'm like, here she go again. Cause every single scene that we had had at that point, there was either some argument, some debate, except for that one scene that they showed early in the episode when all of us sat down and we said we was cool with going co-headlining. But she still, even in that scene, she had the attitude because Tamika was talking about her creative ideas. But in this one, she just was like, yeah, mm, I don't know, what? Mm. And it, she was doing it more than what they even showed. Even Coco was like, I mean, do you want, do you know anything? Do you care about anything? Like, do you have an opinion on anything? And she was just like, oh, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I have to think about it. Oh, I'm not sure. I just, it was just so like, her her energy was just draining. Basically, Coco was just like, all right, cool. Well, she just kind of felt like, all right, well, I already said the songs that I know my group is going to want to sing. So I'll catch y'all later. That's basically how she kind of like, he was great. I'll see y'all, <laughs> like that type of thing. And then after she left, she and I, I mean, Tasha and I had this whole back and forth, which I still don't understand why they put it in there because I felt like a lot of things were said that would have made some good TV. Like there have been a lot, a few things that have been taken out this show where I feel like I don't know why they didn't use it because honey, like this show has been good, but it could have been even more. Well, the thing I asked them, why weren't they putting this conversation in the show? And I was told because they were saying like me and Tasha kept going back and forth about things that had not happened on camera. So they felt like it would been too much to try to follow for the audience because y'all didn't get to see any of the things that me and her was going back and forth about. I mean, I know she has said something like she said that I had been mean to her mama before. I was like, when have I ever been mean to your mama? And then she said, um, these are things that I'm saying that was in the conversation that they didn't show you. She said that um, I should, um, basically she blamed me for the drama that was happening between her and her sister. And I was like, what do I have to do with this? Like, what are you talking about? She was like, you should be trying to fix the situation. And instead of the fixing the situation, you over here added to it. And I'm like, ma'am, like, I ain't got nothing to do with y'all arguing or y'all having issues. Like, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Like, I just kind of feel like every time there's a problem, she finds a way to make me the problem. Like, what the hell I got to do with her taking some checks? Like, I wasn't even around when that situation happened. Like, I, that was during the time that me and Tamika wasn't even speaking. So what you want me to do? Like, I heard everything through either Tiny Mama or Tiny. Like, I wasn't even there. So what you want me to get in that for? Like, I just didn't even understand. So, like, that whole conversation... It got really crazy because then I did bring up like the fact that she was the one who, because she kept saying how, and you, you know, you said you didn't want to give us a bone. And I'm like, when did I say I want to give y'all a bone? She was saying after doing our first season of our first reality show. I said, I 
never said that. I don't know who told you that. I never said anything about not want to give you. Huh? You went on tour. Yeah, no, we went on tour together and made millions. Oh, so I, I'm going to get to that too later and when I talk about her video. But I was like, girl, like, what are you talking about? Like, I ain't never say I wasn't going to try to give you. I said I didn't want to do another season of that Still Kicking It reality show because I didn't feel like it was good for me. It wasn't a good look for me. It wasn't good for my energy because anything that happens with my group, people can say, oh, but you do the argument on Housewives all the time. It's way different for me when I argue with my group. I'm very much more stressed and passionate about it because I grew up with these girls, you know what I'm saying? So I told her like, I, yes, I didn't want to do a season two of Still Kicking It. The network, the production company, they all wanted to do a season two. People always like, oh, but y'all didn't do multiple seasons of y'all. Our show was averaging 1.5 to like 1.8 million in an episode. So of the Still Kicking It show, you can, those are facts. Y'all can go back and look. And that was escape headline. That was just escape, okay? <laughs> So when y'all be like, why escape can do another? We could have done another show. I didn't want to do another show because I was like, we probably wouldn't even be able to keep performing together if we kept doing a reality show together, which hints this show. You see, we on a reality show together and all of us ain't performing together. So I was right in what, how I felt. She can stop running that. I said, I want to give them another bone. I don't even know who told her that. But anyway, but yeah, there were a lot of things said. And then she was, um, she was saying something about the group and, and I was, oh, she was trying to make it seem like, because I was like, the girls are like willing to do it without you. And she was like, oh, really? Saying like, I was putting my other two members up to doing the shows without her. Because during that, um, we had got booked for another show outside of this, outside of the show. And she, Tasha said she wasn't doing the show. My group members, Tamika and Tiny, decided they just wanted to do the show without her. And they said, oh, and that's what they wanted to do. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm cool with it. Let's roll. That happened while we were filming this. They're not going to show it on the show. But she, Tasha, it was trying to say in this argument, a debate, that I was amping the girls up to do performances without her. And I'm like, I was like, what? You think they don't have a mind on their own? I was like, girl, these girls want to make money. And if you decide you don't want to perform with us, they still going to want to do shows. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Like, I'm not making them do this. Like, she was talking to me like I need them for the money. Like, these are my girls. Like, this is our group. Yes, we make money together. We make good money together. But I don't need that situation to make money. So I don't know why she was trying to make it seem like I was plotting against her to just saying we could do it without her. That was not the truth. So we were arguing about these things. And then I also, which in turn, I started getting really mad. And then I started talking about how they had me sign a leaving member notice all them years ago. And I got super emotional and passionate about it. Needless to say, that part of the conversation did not air. So I'm sure she's somewhere in her field and saying, Candy had them to cut it out because she was crying. <laughs> Ain't that what she did? <laughs> Girl. Like, I am a very open person. I do not care if y'all see me cry. <laughs> like, I'm not having nobody take nothing out because I'm crying. So you can forget that. That You talk to them producers about why they took it out because... I'm mad they took it out too, honey. I feel like they should show all that stuff. Same way in that other scene that you, since we got it, I gotta speak on that. Cause she said I had to take it out. She was speaking on the scene from the episode, was that the second episode? Tiny. At Tiny's house, when her and her sister had just had this big argument. And um, they had they had been having issues about this whole Tamika bringing up the $30,000 or whatever. When we had a sit down with the group, she wanted to make me the reason why she didn't want, she didn't know if she wanted to perform with us anymore and was saying, you know, I've been trying to build a friendship with you. This is the part that they took out. Oh yeah, we already she made this clear. Didn't want to show it on her speak -on. Yeah, and how she gonna take all my clips from speak on it and put it in her video? I, 
I started to tell them to, to strike that video and take my footage, but then I thought about it. I was like, then she'll be telling y'all that I was trying to stop her money on YouTube. So I said, let her have it, child. Let her have it. Let her have it. But my point is, like, she swore. Oh, but what she did tell y'all is, at the end of the conversation, when she got up and walked out because she didn't want to talk to her sister, which was actually the real issue that was happening at the time, and she started crying, and they had Tiny outside talking to her while she was crying, and they didn't show that. They didn't show you and her. <laughs> they didn't show you and your motherfucking crocodile tears. <laughs> what, you, what you putting it off on me for? You always want to put something on me, but okay. So I was just letting you know that because, yes, they cut out a part, another part of a conversation with her and I that did not get aired but actually happened. But the overall, I guess what they wanted you to see, they're trying to keep things to the point of this SWV and X Escape show and the concert and not allow us to go down this rabbit hole that we always go into of our own personal drama. I didn't understand what issues she was saying that she was dealing with with the group. Um, to be clear, before we started the show. The only issue we had had was the drama with Tamika and Tasha at the um, Vegas show that where they showed y'all the text message with what her and Tamika said on the text. Now, me and Tasha really didn't have any drama. She got mad because I liked Tamika's comment in the text. But other than that, like right before the Vegas show, we had the show here in Atlanta with Mary J. Blige and everybody was good. Like we had, totally good karma good energy like we didn't have no problems we didn't have any issue the only issue was that one thing that happened when she left us at the concert in vegas i didn't understand how she allowed this to blow up and turn into something so big because we've had way worse arguments and it didn't do all this so i personally still say to this day that it, because she knew she was doing her solo project all of a sudden she allowed something that was small to be a bigger issue just so she could say she didn't want to deal with us i'm standing on that okay so <laughs> this is what i wanted to me this didn't do nothing but prove my point so rocky and tasha discussed our record deal she was excited as you should be when you got a new deal on the table but she says in her conversation when he's asking her about her dealings with us she said that she didn't know how like she's glad to be in a place of peace and you know how she didn't really want to don't know if she want to deal with us and that's what i've been saying she would prefer to be solo and not deal with the stuff of the group if she has success as a solo artist she wouldn't be stunning us and i've been saying that to y'all y'all just act like y'all don't get it but whatever <laughs> glad she finally got her deal yeah so that that was that on that like i think it's weird that um like she just don't own the fact that yeah she got a solo deal and she didn't really want to deal with us I'm like and that's fine if that's how you feel but like i said in business conversations sometimes you have to say things that are uncomfortable to other people but instead of being sneaky with it behind the back with it sometimes you just need to just be up front and talk to people and just say what it is and then you make life easier for everybody involved. Okay, so that was my thoughts on the episode. Now, can I get to what I thought about Miss Tasha and her clip that she posted? <laughs> her PSA that she posted, using all of the speak on it in, in her within her video. Oh my gosh, I thought it was hilarious. If you really want to know what I thought, I thought it was hilarious. But yes, there were some untruths in it, and I have to address it. Oh, I have to address a couple things. Well, let me, before that, let me address this other interview of hers that's going on online. In this week's news, I saw a clip where she's going on talking about, on the song, you know, they didn't want me to sing solo, and on the song I did with Joe, uh, Candy tried to sing the lead, and she took four hours to try to sing it. Like, four hours. <laughs> Four hours to try to sing the lead, and, and you know, it just wasn't right. It just wasn't right. And then Tiny, she went in and sang, sang hours and hours and hours. Oh my gosh, was this a, a money love title? She did hours and hours, and but she was just too nasally. 
And so Joe was like, you have to go sing this record. Now, first of all, I don't even remember trying to sing the lead on that song. I thought they knew who they wanted to sing. But if my memory isn't correct, I know good and damn well, I ain't never took four hours to sing nothing. And nobody would even allow that in our group. In our group, if somebody wanted to try your voice on a particular song, you may get 30 minutes, if that to try it before whoever's producing or the group to be like, yeah, nah, Candy, or yeah, nah, that don't fit your voice, right? So, yeah, I don't, yeah, that is a lie and the truth ain't in it. But that was the first thing. Now, mind you, Tiny, she said Tiny is too nasally. Are you talking about this time singing the song? Well, sweetheart, I don't know, when she sang it, with us in rehearsal and singing in the show, I mean, people loved her voice on it. I mean, I don't really think your version of the truth is the truth. I don't remember that happening at the studio. You always come with some different version of the truth, always. So it's like, you just saying what you can to say to try to make me look bad, but it's okay. And not just me this time, now this time you can't even sign it. I'm used to you coming for me, but that was funny. Moving right along. So this is a part that I really need to give you guys clarity on. When she talked about, she talked about me crying again. She said, I, she must forgot when I walked in with her and Jermaine and she was crying. <laughs> she did that, right? Okay, so let me tell you the conversation of what happened. So all she does is really be confirming what I'm saying. So you guys, as I've always told you, first two albums, we as a group would go into the studio together. Yes, I did sing a lot of the leads. As she confirmed, she said, oh, I didn't say she didn't sing anything. She said, I had a problem with her singing something. So the example that she gave you was something that happened during the third album. The third album of which I've told y'all again and again, they were using our third album to set up her solo project. So this particular day that she's speaking of, I want to let you know why I was upset. Any other time in our, the, the times that we was making hits, the first two albums, we were all, we would all come to the studio as a group. We all got the memo that we were supposed to be at the studio. We all would come sing backgrounds and do whatever, whatever, sing our parts, right? This particular day, this is a song that was being recorded for the third album. I get to the studio. First of all, they didn't even invite Tiny or Tamika to the studio to record a song that was for supposedly Escape. They didn't even get invited to the studio, okay? I get, he tells me to come to the studio. When I get to the studio, the song has already been recorded. Taja had sang the, the whole song and had already had backgrounds, everything done. The song was done. It was a Tasha song, okay? And he wanted to put my backgrounds on the song so that he could make it sound like an escape record. To be clear, in the past on our first couple of albums, they used to always put my background vocals louder than everybody else because regardless of how y'all feel about my voice, my voice is distinctive. And he felt like, and the engineer, all of them, they felt like when people heard my voice, you could tell that it was an escape record similar to how you know in slim and 112 everybody in 112 can sing but slim sang on a lot of songs because his voice is very unique and distinctive not a, it's not about him singing better than anybody else in 112 it's just he had a distinctive tone right similar to the same thing in our group i have a distinctive tone so anyway bringing you back to he invited just me not my other group members to come in to add my backgrounds to a song that Tasha had already completed. But we were recording our third album, but we it was already agreed upon that she was going solo on So So Dev after our third album was done. And so that's why I say to you guys all the time, they were using our third album to set up her solo project. In what world should my other group members have not been invited, okay, to a escape session? So to be clear to you, I didn't have a problem with Tasha. As she said, when she walked in, I spoke to her. I had a problem with our producer, our label head. So I was addressing him and it became an argument because he was like, ah, oh, Candy, you tripping, da, da, da. And I'm like, how the 
the fuck you not gonna invite Tiny and Tamika to the session, but you just gonna call me to add backgrounds to a song y'all already finished? That is a Tasha song. So yes, y'all know how I am when I be arguing or when I'm upset or I'm passionate. I always my eyes tear up or whatever. So yes, she did walk on walk in on me and um, Jermaine arguing about a song that she was um, singing solo on. But you got to put it in context. Don't just tell people I'm mad because you singing solo. I'm mad because y'all didn't invite y'all did not invite our entire group to be a part of a song that was supposed to be for escape and they had did that on a couple of songs on that album so i just wanted to put that out there so when you saying i'm upset with you about you singing a solo you now you know why so you can be clear i did not shade you i did not you know yell at you i was having that debate with our producer which is the proper he's the person i was supposed to have an issue with I would think, right? Okay. It doesn't matter what happens. She always makes me her villain. It's like, I'm her villain. No matter what time period you put it in back in the day, you put it into these days. She's always making it that I am her problem in her life. When in all honesty, in these last few years, I felt like we had come to a place of an understanding. Like, no, me and her don't have a tight relationship like I do with my other group members. But we can work together. We can go do shows together and be cordial. Like, we don't have, like, I ain't had no problem with her. We ain't been having arguments. We ain't been beefing. So I can, cannot understand why she still makes me the problem in her life. Like, girl, fix your issues with your sister right now. Fix your issues with your family. That is where your real issue. I ain't never went out publicly and said some of the real slimy things I felt that your husband and you have done like I ain't did that publicly now one of the things I will have to address because it's gonna come on the show in a couple of episodes but as of yet I ain't cleared the air about certain things like I haven't I'm gonna keep looking over here because Jamie over here okay y'all I didn't I didn't I haven't done that so it's you and your sister have been doing that like so stop it stop making me your problem now here's the other issue I had with her video so you know people have been you know making jokes about my voice which is whatever whatever I don't I don't really care uh, but Tasha actually made a joke about my voice in her video in her speak on it <laughs> But they needed you to sing on her song on the escape album no, yeah no 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 this is the part that is like really corn corny of her to me you are trying to clown a person's voice whose voice is leading on half the hits that is your claim to fame The biggest hit that you've ever been on, which is just kicking it, is the voice that you've been clowning or that you're clowning in your video. I'm cool. You know, I can go back and forth with other people about, or I don't even go back and forth with them really, but other people can try to make jokes about my voice or, or whatever. But me and you are in a group together. We supposed to make money together. We supposed to hit the stage together. You have been hearing my voice all these years as you making money off of it, right? But you on your video trying to make jokes about my voice. The same voice who has accomplished more than you with your amazing voice that you try to put out there that you have. Like I have been on other hits that's bigger than you. I mean, oh, and honestly, and I know y'all be trying to say it's an ego thing. I only bring up accomplishments when I have to feel like I'm defending myself. Let's be clear. I've already had a number one billboard gospel single, Candy. I'm going to post up this picture so you can see me, not Escape. I have had a number one, Stay Prayed Up was number one on the gospel, on Billboard's gospel chart when it came out. Yes, my voice. I've had a number one gospel song. Something that right now is what you are trying to do. 
Me, me and my voice that you tried to clown. We are in a group together, sis. I don't clown my group members' voices. I don't clown when they mess up. We have plenty of arguments. We fall out all the time. But it's like you is trying to join on the bandwagon of other people and clowning your group member that goes on stage with you and make money with you. Well, how did who they do that at? You clowning me, you clowning yourself. Baby, 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 baby. What you doing it's stupid for you to do that and then on top of that yeah people been clowning me but lately they've been clowning you too for singing them same tight runs you've been singing since 1993 i need you to play that clip that people been i'm gonna give it to you too but have i been trying to go online like oh she's saying them same tire runs it's not like i never thought it it's not like i never thought it i would have never said that but since you want to go and throwing mud at each other that is so stupid to me you know i feel like we should keep our stuff to the facts or the drama but your opinion or trying to laugh are you laughing <laughs> and all 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 of these people who want to make jokes about my voice who all of y'all sing so great and y'all sing so amazing but having caught no headline without me in these last weeks or months or years i don't know catch a headline without me please please i i just i just i mean i just don't think that's godly y'all please get her album when it comes out on good friday it's called conversations with god I'm like, her conversations with God must only be about me. Because those are the conversations you're having with everybody. It's only about me. I mean, I need her album to blow up so she can be at peace and she ain't got to mess with us no more because God knows I don't want to sing with her no more. God knows I don't. I'm, I'm tired of the back and forth. I'm tired of being her villain in her story. I am tired. I am tired. Uh, I'm tired of the truth being changed. Oh yeah, and she want to give her husband all this credit about working with the group. Okay, first of all, let's go back to what she said about them performing. When she showed that show of the Jermaine thing with her and her sister performing together, it was like, cause Candy didn't want to do it and Candy didn't. First of all, at that time, that was before we made up. I had not even spoke to them in over a decade. But Jermaine just wanted us to just go on stage together, just threw it out there that I was supposed to be coming back with my group. And I'm like, yo, he didn't even make sure, he didn't bring us together to try to work out us being on the same page talking. Of course, I'm not gonna, I ain't seen, seen him in 10 years. I wasn't finna just jump on the stage. So yes, that is why her and her sister did that show. I wasn't even doing shows at that time anymore because they started doing their Escape 3 thing. I only came back for that. You gonna see why. I'm, ooh, I can't wait till I can tell y'all the full story. Then she wanna say something about the performance that me and Tiny missed um, last year, right? Why last year. She, why do you think she's bringing this up? It's because she's trying to make me look like a villain in her story. And I'm gonna tell you straight up. Me and Tiny, oh, and that's gonna be brought up. Those particular shows, Tiny and I had caught COVID. We weren't able to, it was the day of um, the show, I found out that I wasn't gonna be able to perform. I had literally drove all the way to South Carolina. They didn't, nobody, none of us performed on that show. But then the next day we were supposed to be performing in Atlanta. Tamika and Tasha decided to do the show themselves they ain't even talked to me about it they ain't asked me what i felt because i would have said i don't think that's a good idea they they told tiny that they was thinking they was gonna do it but they said before that everybody was still gonna get their money or whatever because at the end of the day our names were used to promote the show it wasn't like they knew ahead and was able to just sell it just based on them so our names was used to promote the show but after the fact when we were supposed to get paid on it that's when Tasha just, you know, I guess said that me and Tiny wasn't supposed to get our money. I was like, Tiny, I thought you said, because she was the one to talk to him. I said, like, I thought you said they told us we were still all going to get our money, even though, you know, obviously we was, we got sick that day. And Tiny said, Oh, hell 
on now. Uh uh, we about to get that motherfucking money. Nah uh, they they gonna give us all that money. That's what we discussed before they even did that shit. Da 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 da. Tiny was the one who said y'all was gonna pay us. And yeah, that's my girl. So I'ma like, I'm riding with her. I'm like, yeah, okay, was well, she right? Like they use all of our names to promote the show. It's so much to this, guys. Steven Steele, she still tried to make it be like, Candy said that we had to pay her or we she wasn't doing the shows no more. You always try to make it me. Always, always, always. Yeah, we had to make up this show. We had to make up the show from the missing show, y'all. And that's how we ended up working with this promoter that she doesn't like. But ooh, I can't wait till y'all see why she don't like them. Ooh, ooh, I cannot wait. Yes, you gonna see it. It's so much more that has to be played out in these next two episodes. To be honest with you guys, I don't even know how they narrowed down all the drama and the craziness in just six episodes. It was so much more that should have aired. I hope that I was able to give you a little clarity on some of this BS. Oh, what I was gonna say to you was, she was giving her husband so much credit on all these shows that he supposedly was doing for us. And first of all, I ain't never asked that man to manage escape. I was like, oh, we, if we ever, ever do a TV series, a movie about our life, I'll give you all the fine details then. But child, just know I ain't never asked him to manage us. I was like, he's just, oh, they be dragging these lies. I, I just can't. And on top of that, how he made us all this money, I was the one who said, y'all can go back to the escape, still kicking the show. I told him then. They wanted to be openers for somebody. I told them I wasn't doing no shows or no tour unless we headlined our own tour. They tried to get a, a, some promoters to come in that really wasn't offering us what we needed. I brought us in the promoter who ended up, give, ended up giving us the deal that we deserved and gave us the percentages that we should get in order to make the millions that we've made and set up the tone for the sh the shows that we had going forward even for them to do shows as just three people get into the bag so i'm like girl why you always you don't never want to give me no credit though we made millions on that escape tour. Yes, we did. Yeah. But it wasn't because your husband set up that with the promoter. Preach. I was the one who called that promoter. I was the one who told him, like, yo, this is what we got to have in order to make it work. <laughs> I don't get credit for that. I'm over it. And we split the money equally. It wasn't like I was coming in and like, oh, I got to get more than you. No. So what? Why my group, she don't go hard for us at all. She's for herself. No, I do not make more than my group members. We split all our money equally. It, it, it's sad. And then y'all saw her on the blogs trying to run over there to be with SWV somewhere when she was in the comments trying to, she wanted to uh, get all the candy haters together in one group meeting. <laughs> they said, meeting, <laughs> let's all come together and hate on candy. I just want people to understand I need y'all to stop trying to find a way to dislike me. It's like people be like, ooh, she had to have did that. You ain't never seen no sign of me doing any of the stuff of this, that these people are saying, but you are assuming in your heart of hearts that I had to have did her wrong in some kind of way just because you don't like me. Like, just because you don't like me, just don't like me. But don't be trying to make up stuff that I did. Don't try to make up that I had to have had my husband to do something to these folks. Like, don't make up. Come on, stick with facts, facts, receipts, facts, receipts. Like, I, I mean, as I said earlier, I feel like people always want to attack my husband whenever they made at me. And the things that have been said about my husband this week is like terrible lies and totally unfair and not of his character, right? Well, I know this was a long speak on it, but I had to make set the record, record straight for all these people who think they finna just go online talking crazy about me. <laughs> Thank you for following me on all the platforms. Please make sure you follow me on my Amazon shop so you can be privy to the um, things that I am doing on Amazon Live. It's always fun and I always drop some tea on there. And then I also want you to follow me on AMP because that's where I do Candy Coated Live. Yeah, obviously all social media. Make sure you follow me and make sure you're subscribing. 
Subscribe, 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 because we got more to come. I just have to say my theme songs for the week. Please download uh, my gospel song, Stay Prayed Up, and also download Fly Above for all of you who know what I'm going through about all this drama. You know, you just got to fly above. Fly above, fly above, fly above, honey. Y'all do know the Real Housewives of Atlanta, they should be dropping their trailers soon um, in the next few weeks. So to be clear, this drama ain't gonna stop for me no time soon, so I just done got used to it. I'm I'm embedded in your motherfucking brain, bitch, and I'm standing on it. <laughs> and until next time, thank you for watching. Speak on it. Well, speak on it. That's what I kept on saying not too long ago. It seems like I was living in the darkest hole. My sadness and my anger start to take control. I had a lot of stuff weighing on me, y'all. I shed a lot of tears that you didn't see, no. But I couldn't let grief consume me. Cause I got a little girl depending on me. It can't rain forever. The sun's gotta shine again. I remember that old saying, so I kept praying. And you should do the same, my friend. I stay prayed up. That gets me by.